Good morning students. In today's class, I will be talking about Faraday's laws of electrolysis. Before I go to the laws, let us clarify what does the word electrolysis mean. Electrolysis is a process where electrical energy is used for a chemical reaction, which means you require a constant source of energy for the chemical reaction to happen. Hence, such a chemical reaction is generally non-spontaneous. That is, the delta G value gives free energy for such processes which happen during electrolysis is greater than zero. Let me give you a recall. For thermodynamics chapter, you've done Gibbs free energy. This Gibbs free energy used to be a positive value for a non-spontaneous process, negative value for a positive for a spontaneous process while the value was zero when the reaction was at equilibrium. The source of current that we use during electrolysis has to be a DC, a direct current source, so that the positive and the negative terminals are fixed. The reaction electrolysis happens in a cell. This device is also called as the electrolytic cell. In an electrolytic cell, you have the anode where by default always oxidation would happen and oxidation is loss of electrons. Whereas you have a cathode, the other electrode where always reduction happens which is gain of electrons. Anode is always the positive terminal if we are referring to an electrolytic cell. And cathode is always the negative terminal if we are referring to the electrolytic cell. Now, before I move further towards the laws of Faraday, let me give you a brief quantitative treatment of electrolysis. You very well know, let us take a reaction where I am depositing silver atoms, uh, silver molecules, silver atoms, besides molecules it would never be because silver has got a valence of 1 and it accepts one electron to deposit as silver. So if silver is depositing from a solution, it would be as an ion. This silver ion would accept electrons and would become silver. I hope you can understand since electrons are gained, this process is going to happen at the cathode. Similarly, when we talk about magnesium ions from another solution, Magnesium has a two positive charge. It would require two electrons to be deposited as magnesium solid. Now, if I want one atom of silver deposited, the requirement would be one electron. And if I want one mole of silver deposited, the requirement will be one mole electrons. Similarly, if I want only one atom of magnesium. Then in that case, for one atom of magnesium, the requirement would be two electrons. But if I want one mole of magnesium deposited, I would require two moles of electrons. Now, developing the topic further, from the moles of electrons, we can see that if I am talking about the moles of electron, we very well know that charge on one electron is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs is known to us and if I have one mole of electrons therefore it means 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 the charge of a single electron multiplied by Avogadro's number for one mole of electrons would be 6.022 to 10 to the power 23 electrons. This is the total charge which is present if one mole of electrons are transferred. This value comes out to be as 9, 6, 4, 8, 7 coulombs. We approximate the value to be 96500 for all practical purposes and this is called as the Faraday's constant. So, the Faraday's constant is nothing but charge on one mole of electrons. Hence, this value is 
नाइन सिक्स फाइव डबल जीरो कूलर्स सो आई होप इफ आई कम बैक टू द प्रीवियस पार्ट दैट वी वर डूइंग यू कैन क्लियरली कोरिलेट वेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट वन मोल ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स रिक्वायर्ड फॉर दिस डिपोजिशन इफ आई वॉन्ट वन मोल डिपोजिटेड आई विल रिक्वायर वन फैरडे दैट इज चार्ज ऑफ नाइन सिक्स फाइव डबल जीरो कूलम्स सिमिलरली टू डिपोजिट वन मोल ऑफ मैग्नीशियम I require two electrons. I I require two moles of electrons. So the charge that I require is two Faradays or nine six five double zero coulombs into two is the requirement if I need to deposit one mole of magnesium. That is for twenty four grams of magnesium. The requirement is two moles of electrons, which will be by two Faradays. Building the concept of the laws now let me come to the first law of faraday faraday's first law states the following that if you have an electrolytic cell and a process is involved in an electrolytic cell you would always have some of the other depositions happening on the electrodes when we talk about these electrodes it is the masses would be deposited on the electrodes so for any cell where you have a dc current supplied onto the electrodes you would have some kind of depositions happening if this is the negative terminal this is the positive terminal you would have some kind of metal deposited at the cathode by accepting the electrons hence we have some kind of depositions happening onto the cathode this deposition this weight of the substance that is being deposited during electrolysis is directly proportional to how much charge are you passing through the electrolytic cell therefore we say that let this be the weight of the substance deposited is directly proportional to the charge passed through the cell is your first law amount of substance deposited at the cathode or during electrolysis is dependent on the charge that is passed through it and you know charge is represented as q so W is finally equal to a proportionality constant given by Z into Q. This Z is called as the electrochemical equivalent, which is calculated as the atomic mass of the metal divided by valency and one Faraday. charge or else it is also given as the equivalent weight divided by faraday and you know that equivalent weight of any metal is nothing but atomic mass divided by n when n factor refers to the charge on the metal ion or if it is not a metal ion it also refers to the change in oxidation state so finally we end up in the formula for the first law which becomes weight of substance deposited is equal to instead of z i am writing the atomic mass upon the n factor where n factor is generally i repeat the charge on the metal ion which is deposited if it is not the charge on the metal ion then it is the change in oxidation state of the metal ion and multiplied by the faraday's constant which is already done as 96500 coulombs and you have a q q which you know is equal to i the current into t time i mind time is always taken in seconds don't forget your numericals will be a mess if you don't relate it to the seconds hence i put it as i into t the time in seconds so your final formula required for all calculations of faraday's law for any weight deposited during electrolysis can be done through this formula to drill the concept further i would be taking up a numerical to relate to the question that we are going to do now let me take this particular question have a look at the question before i start off the question says 
calculate the time to deposit 1.27 grams of copper at the cathode. The deposition has to be at the cathode when you have a current given to you as 2 amperes and you are passing this current through a solution of copper sulfate aqueous. You are also provided with the atomic mass of copper which you would be requiring. You are given the amount of copper deposited which means you are using the first formula of Faraday's first law. Moving to the Faraday's first law. The formula was weight deposited is equal to atomic mass I the current in amperes time in seconds upon n the change in oxidation state or the valency of the metal ion multiplied by the Faraday's constant. Now in this the weight is provided to you. Therefore I substitute the values. The weight of the substance is given to you as 1.27 grams from here. Atomic mass would be for copper 63.5. Time is to be calculated. Current in amperes is 2 amperes. N, the valency of copper as you can see in copper sulfate, sulfate having a valency of 2, copper also having it as 2, the valency becomes 2. The Faraday's constant is 96500 coulombs. So, your final values after substitution you come up to 1.27 is equal to 63.5 multiplied by 2 multiplied by time upon. 2 for the valency into 96500. Transposing and calculating the value of T, we actually end up in 1.27 multiplied by 2, taking in there, multiplied by 96500, divided by, you are left with division, you would require a 2 again in the denominator and a 63.5. This 2 gets cancelled on both the ends. Your value of time after calculations comes out to be 91930 seconds. I've used a calculator, so you can do the same to verify the answers. The value of time is in seconds as already explained to you. Don't forget, take the time in seconds. I hope the first law of thermal or first law of Faraday's is clear through this particular question. Thank you.